All right. So now we're going to jump to 2.3 and we will be back on schedule. Uh, so 2.3 is about modeling with PEs. So it's just a chance to see a couple models that we can use with um, the differential equation solving techniques that you've learned so far. So that's integrating factor and separable DEs, right? So I think the most common one is exponential growth or decay. So let's suppose if this pen will work. Suppose a population, let's call it P, grows directly proportional to the population at time t with a growth rate of r. Can anybody translate this sentence into a mathematical equation? You're jumping ahead. Nice. We are actually getting there. So let's just break it down. So suppose a population P grows. So grows means derivative, right? We're talking about rate of change. So let's call that dp over dt and directly proportional to the population at time t. So directly proportional is when we have some constant that we're multiplying by the function. So if y is directly proportional to x, we would have y equals 5x if that was the number that made it directly proportional. So that's all we mean by directly proportional is um, you can write it in this form. So we have, I hate this stupid thing. We have dp equals r, dp over dt equals rp. This is the differential equation. How can we solve it? Right. Separate and then integrate. So we can find P of T using separation of variables. Do you want to walk me through this one, Rob? Um, you would divide. Uh... P to the left hand side of the equation. Uh -huh. um, do we want to do the weird notation trick or? Yep, let's do the weird notation trick. So we have one over P. Uh, DP and uh, multiply the DT over to the other side. Perfect. So R is just some sort of parameter here. It's a constant of some kind, so it's not a function. So this is good. All right, now what do you want me to do? Integrate both sides. So I've got the natural log of the absolute value of P equals K, not K, I was using R's, R, T plus D. So it ended up being okay on that last problem that you all dropped the absolute values, but let's talk about why it's going to be okay that you dropped all those absolute values, okay? So if I want to solve for P, I'm going to take the exponential of both sides. So I've got the absolute value of P equals E to the RT plus C or E to the RT times E to the C like we talked about on the board, right? Okay. 
e to the c is just a constant. So we have p equals, I'm going to write this as plus or minus e to the c, e to the rt. So to drop those absolute value bars, I just have a plus or minus. But plus or minus e to the c, all of this is a constant, right? So that's why it ended up being OK that everybody dropped those absolute value bars. So we've got p equals, and I'm going to call my new constant a, e to the rt. You can still call it c. I just want to introduce this notation because you see this in a lot of textbooks that for some reason, what when you write your new constant, instead of writing another C, people write an A when we're dealing with E to the C. No idea why. But A is just a constant, so all is well. Yes? If it's plus or minus, how would that be Because when we have our initial condition, we will solve and it will tell us should that constant be negative or positive. So we were not able to do this in our first example when we had those square roots. We still needed the plus or minus, but that's because our C was inside the square root. So it wasn't able to do any work of absorbing those positives and negatives. Now let's assume the population at time zero is p0 or p0 what's my equation going to become mm -hmm. so p of t equals p not e to the rt which i think is an equation we are all familiar with this is where it comes from So I was doing the example of um, population when we were deriving this, but what else is this model used for? Yep. So interest compounded continuously. Anything else? Depreciation, that's a good one. I think that's how I spell depreciation, but if not, this is a math class. <laughs> There's a reason I became a math person. What about radioactive decay? Like all those problems when they're like, how old is this object because it has a, uh, because it has so much carbon left and you do those problems. So carbon dating, lots of fun stuff. So let's, for problems four and five, you're going to do one with a very simple um, growth rate. Um, we're going to work with money, and then you'll also have one where you're working with deposits. So let's go to the boards and work both four and five. 